Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have Thomas Ian Nicholas here from American Pie, Rookie of the Year, A Kid in King Arthur's Court, anything from our childhood. Thank you so much for being here and chatting with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Been, uh, you know, a fan of E-bombs, maybe not quite as long as uh, Jarrett and the Bowling for Soup guys. Now that I'm following you on Instagram, uh, I got a kick out of the uh, You Wanna Mo. Alanis Morissette's, uh, yes. you know, landscaping company that we didn't know we needed. Definitely. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if you want to get into some questions here, um, I think everybody is just curious about your career and just the journey you've been on, you know? You know, I'm 36 years into acting and I started playing music in 94, working on my seventh album and produced uh, six feature films. And I've got two kids. So basically, I never sleep. <laughs> there you go. That dad life, right? Exactly. Okay, so if we can go all the way back, um, what was your experience like working on Rookie of the Year? Because that's what I, that's my childhood. That's what I grew up on. It was amazing. You know, I was, that was my first lead role in a studio feature film. So I was stoked to, uh, to have gotten the job. Uh, lived in Chicago for three months. It was a little cold uh, near the end of it. Um, but certainly getting to be on Wrigley Field at the time was one of the three oldest. Now we don't, of course, have that. You know, it was just an amazing experience being on there. That's so cool. Wrigley is so historic, too. You know, it's just that's it's amazing. Was there any pressure back then? Because you were about 12, 13 when that movie came out. Right. So was there any pressure on you for being almost an icon at that age? I don't think it was necessarily pressure. It was just weird. Um being recognized by so many people after the success of the film. It certainly wasn't anything I was anticipating. And I don't think you can really prepare for that at any age, but especially not at 13 years old in 1993. It wasn't that it was no pressure, but I mean, there was no pressure to perform or be anything that I was or wasn't. It just was overwhelming. And I didn't anticipate that. And I, at that point, I'd been studying the craft of acting for six years. I love doing the job, but I never thought about like, oh, <laughs> the byproduct of being successful at your job is that you may get recognized for that, um, <laughs> which right. again, in your mind, maybe, you know, someone would say, oh, I really liked you in this film or I enjoy your work. But there was moments that were just similar to the film, really. I remember I went to Dodger Stadium to play in the All-Star game and it was, you know, like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was there and you know, Tony Danza was pitching and I had worked with Tony when I was six years old on who's the yeah. boss. So he threw me a lob so I could hit a frozen rope to center field. And afterwards they were like, oh, do you want tickets to the game? So my mom and I were like, sure, we'd love to go to a Dodger game. So we get up in the stands and before you know it, someone's like, hey, aren't you? And seriously, just like Henry running through the airport in oh, rookie of the year, uh, it started to be like hundred, like 300 people <laughs> surrounding me and like security is like, we got to get you out of here. Yeah. You know, this is like becoming a fire hazard. And it's I was like, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. I got to get out of here. Oh my God. That's such a, an interesting experience because you were filming those scenes, but it's almost like that, that was you. You were a child star and you're, you were dealing with that kind of stuff. And I love how rookie of the year kind of reflects that, you know? But the interesting thing is that didn't happen to me until the film came out. So <laughs> everything that I'm doing right. is, you know, in fact, acting that way and following Daniel Stern's direction. I mean, so much to the point where even my, my scratchy voice was not how I really sounded, but yeah. Dan really wanted it that way to really show the, the physicality of Henry. Yeah. Uh, because I do music. Obviously you yeah. saw the uh, post with Bowling for Soup and that's how this all started. Yeah. When I sang the Pepsi commercial, when I was in post-production, Danny's like, yeah, you have to redo this. I go, what's up? He says, well, you sang it well. So therefore it's not funny. He's like, you have to sing it <laughs> poorly. I need you to right. be out of key and like forget more words. Yeah. What is it? You know when I feel it, baby. You know when it's right. <laughs> <laughs> irresistibly and protectively yeah i don't even remember oh. what i threw in there dude so good so good and uh i mean just just working with somebody like daniel stern i mean it had to be unforgettable it was it was he was great though because he's not zany like the characters that we've seen him portray right in you know home alone as marv he's a you know intelligent thoughtful, caring person that, you know, was really a nurturing director. And I, I often say this, that a lot of times 
actors can be fantastic directors because they really understand the process of what you need as an actor because they've been in the position of needing those things. Right, right. Now, this is probably a stretch, but are we ever going to get a Rookie of the Year sequel? I have been pining for that uh, for quite some time, actually. Now that my son is following in my footsteps and he starred in the recent uh, M. Night Shyamalan movie, Old. Whoa. He's the main kid in that that gets played by four actors. You That's saw the movie. preview, though, because like they yeah. played the preview during the Super Bowl. So the kid right. in the water, when the body floats up behind him, yeah. that kid is my son. Oh, my God. That's incredible. That's Nolan River. And he had a, a small part in my last film, nice. Adverse, that I produced. Yeah, with the Mickey one where Rourke. I went head-to-head -head with Mickey Rourke yeah. and Lionsgate put it in theaters. What I really want is I want to do a Rookie of the Year sequel and have Nolan play Henry's son in the movie. Um, and I took sense. that idea to them in 2016 as they were racing toward the World Series. And I was like, look, if the Cubs lose because then they'll still want the film. If they win, then then we can basically play off the fact that they've got one World Series win. It, it yeah. doesn't matter what happens. Then I know they spun it around and they were going to do a reboot without me and another baseball team. <laughs> and then Disney bought Fox, so I've got the last laugh. So now I'm back to <laughs> you know the idea of doing this sequel. And in fact, I talked to Danny about it. He was into it. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, well, let's let's, you know, let me talk to my team and, you know, maybe get Joe Roth on the line and see if we can make something happen. I think it'd be fun. That's so cool. My uh, <laughs> 90s kid heart is just racing. <laughs> so, yeah, what was uh, what was your dream? Did you always want to be an actor? Did you want to be an athlete? Were you good at baseball or was it always about music? Were you trying to be a musician? Yeah, I mean, I, I started acting when I was six. And I, I still love it to this day. Like being on set is my favorite part of the process. Bringing that character that I've spent time developing and utilizing the techniques that I've spent years, you know, honing. I started playing music in 94 and I love doing that too. I love staying in the creative space, creating a song, creating a character, you know, producing or creating a film. I'm still not really a sports guy, but since the movie, I, of course, am a huge fan of the Cubs. Oh, and yeah. I follow what the Cubs do. Right. Uh, I just don't follow any other sports. That's interesting. You know, I thought you might have like played baseball or, you know, something in, in high school or like, and they were just like, no, like you look the part. I mean, well, I was 12 when I shot it. So I hadn't even thrown a baseball oh, right. really. So I, I had a neighbor teach me the mechanics of, of pitching before I went to Chicago wow. for like a couple of weeks so that I couldn't throw 66 inches because yeah. I didn't know Danny was going to have me do like the, you know, the crazy arm thing yeah. until we got there. I was just about to start the seventh grade. When I came back, I played or I joined the, uh, the baseball team. Yeah. But every time there was a rule, it said, if you miss practice, you ride the bench at the next game. And every practice I had auditions. And I would choose the audition over the practice. <laughs> so I rode the entire season on the bench. <laughs> oh, man. It was uh, art imitating life. I was, I was there with yeah. Windermere on right. the bench. <laughs> After Rookie of the Year, you kind of blow up a little bit. What was it like being a child star in those days compared to what we're seeing today with social media? If you have any advice to give those like child actors, like let's say Stranger Things, you know, those kids are our stars right now. How was it different back then? going through what you went through? Um, man, it, that, it's a hard thing. I can only really answer like what I'm doing for my son. I don't pretend to have any advice for any other, you know, uh, child actors. I did meet some of those kids from Stranger Things uh, a few years ago at Comic-Con. They seem, you know, pretty grounded, at least then. And the show was already massively successful after the first season. The main thing that's different that I see is the audition process has changed drastically. When I was a kid, you know, it was like 100 to 200 auditions a year in person just to land one job. Now, you know, my son has already done three jobs. Granted, one of them was on Adverse, my film. Right. Uh, so he didn't have to audition for that one. <laughs> uh, but he's, he's done two jobs and the kid's only been on maybe like 20 auditions and they're all virtual. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they'll do a call back in person, but most of them, you know, I'm filming them. It, so it reminds me of like technology era, meaning life before Google was sometimes if you didn't know something, you just went on not knowing it. I'm totally stealing this from a comedian, by the way. <laughs> uh, and, and life after Google is, you know, 
if you want to know, you just Google it up and you get the answer. But the difference is there's a greater sort of excitement when you land that job after 200 auditions versus like you land that job after two auditions. Oh, of course. Yeah. So the main thing that I'm just trying to instill in my son is the appreciation, the, the gratitude for what he achieves and not to ever have expectation of like what you deserve just because. And I think that's just important in life in general for everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, 200 auditions. I can't even imagine. Well, that's just a year. <laughs> right. I mean, I've, right. I've been on probably like a thousand auditions in my life. Yeah. So when you look at my career and you're like, oh, he's got 50 movies. You're like, yeah, but I have 950 no's. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so American Pie. <laughs> I love how you have bridged, you bridged the gap. It's always been the stigma where like child actors can't really make it through and you did it seamlessly. So can you tell us what what that next step was like? Yeah, I certainly, I knew the stats. It's like a three percentile of kids that make it into a young adult career. And as I was gearing up to turn 18, I was gearing up to leave the country and go do like, you know, live stage plays in London and go work at an audio, uh, as an audio engineer at this one studio. I'd done ADR for a kid in Arthur's court. And so that was sort of my plan. I had just finished my first album that I've since destroyed, you'll never hear, um, <laughs> with a different band name, but we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> then I booked American Pie, which the audition process was kind of wild in the sense that I first turned down the audition and I thought like I didn't want to go on this like teen sex comedy thing because I, I really judged a book by its cover. I mean, yeah. the original title of the script, as, as I'm sure you've heard in some of the behind the scenes over the last 23 years is untitled teen sex comedy that you studios will hate, but can make for under $10 million that audiences will love or something to right. that effect. And so I like read the opening scene, which was like Kevin and Vicky uh, doing similar things that Jim was doing in the uh, opening scene just together. Uh, and I was like, I don't know what this is. I, I was like, no, thank you. Out my buddy Andrew Keegan, who was in 10 Things I Hate About You, we went to high school together. And I only know this because I've hired Andrew twice now. Uh, one in my, uh, I produced a film for Sony uh, called Living Among Us. William Sadler, the late John Hurd was in it. And then we did Adverse with Mickey Rourke and Lou Diamond Phillips. And Andrew was in that as well. And then he tells me the reason he wasn't able to do American Pie is he got the first offer for Kevin. Whoa. <laughs> he was doing 10 Things I Hate About You. And yeah. so they were trying to coordinate the schedules because they were filming at the same time. And there was one crossover day where Save Ferris, the band, was scheduled to film and they couldn't change it. So really, I don't refer to Save Ferris anymore as Save Ferris. It's more like Save Kevin. Yeah. But Save Ferris <laughs> saved me. Right. Oh, my God. That's insane. So you were the second choice then. You you nailed it. Yeah, well, I hadn't, I hadn't auditioned. So technically, I wasn't the second choice because I had turned down. And in the interim, that was happening. When that fell through, they called my agent back. They're like, listen, can he just consider this? We really want to see him. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'll read the whole script. I'll give it at least a thorough opportunity. Right. And so as soon as I read it and realized there was so much more heart to it, I go, oh, oh, this is actually really good. And I like what Kevin represents. And yeah. yes, I, I do want to do this. And so I went and auditioned for it and the rest is history. <laughs> I never knew that story. That's wild. So you had your little, you had your boost after Rookie of the Year. Was there a boost after American Pie? I mean, because obviously you, you know, you go onto the sequels and you go onto American Reunion. What was that like sort of in your college years when you're doing these films? Were you partying with people? Were people coming up to you being like, oh my God, you're the American Pie guy. Like, what was that like? Um, you know, I, because of my experience as a, as a kid, I mean, I did all the publicity things that Universal required of me and the press junkets and things, but unlike the rest of the cast, I decided not to hire a publicist. I wanted to do the least amount as possible because I just, I knew, I knew from my experience with rookie of the year, what doing a studio film could mean. And, and I obviously didn't know what the film would do, but I knew it was universal. I knew it was going to hit theaters. So again, I just did the least amount possible to my betterment that it happened that way. Because I remember right after the film, everyone else like working a little bit more because they had spent more time advertising themselves. And I maybe like kind of flustered for a minute. But then, you know, things kind of turned around for me and I was able to do vastly different characters during American Pie 2. So like in the one year around filming American Pie 2, 
I played Mitchell in The Rules of Attraction, Bill Woodlake in Halloween Resurrection, and Frank Sinatra Jr. in Stealing Sinatra. Yeah. So it was a crazy run for me yeah. during the second film. And I learned the valuable lesson during American Pie 2. I was like, okay, I guess I need to hire a publicist. <laughs> you know, because yeah. as much as I don't want the quote unquote fame recognition, if someone comes up to me and, you know, is excited to meet me, I'm always going to give them the time of day. That's so cool. I don't want to say that's how it should be, but you know, that's like, that's a great outlook to have, you know? I'm very grateful for, for what I've been blessed with, what I've achieved. I've been in experiences in a reverse situation and I really appreciate the moments where when I'm brave enough to say hello to someone, I was at a party once and they're like, Robert De is right behind you. I was like, I couldn't even turn around. <laughs> you know, I was like, right. I was too nervous right. to even look at him. I just always try to go out of my way to make people feel comfortable because I often get really nervous yeah. when I meet someone whose work I really love, you know? Of course, of course. Can you tell us a little bit more about American Pie? What were some of your favorite memories from set? Oh, man. I mean, we're talking about four movies that you just right. opened up. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I think for me, really, it's kind of like summer camp to a degree. We're friends and hanging out a lot when we're doing the film together. And then obviously, when you go back to your, your regular lives, now we all have kids. like, And even then, our careers, everyone's busy. But the idea that each film that we did, we got a little bit closer. And then especially when we started going on location, we started hanging out more on the weekends getting into more trouble. We don't need to talk about all those things. Um, <laughs> nothing too like, you know, too risque, but just, you know, trouble. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, I think that's, that's the best part of it is that what you see is really what generates in the energy when we're all together. And, and we still stay in touch a little bit here and there. Sean Williams, Scott, and I have a long standing, we've flaked on each other for over 10 years, lunch plans. Uh, I'm, I'm the culprit for the last flake. I apologize. Uh, you know, it's my fault. So now it's my turn to, you know, reinitiate the let's yeah. go to lunch that we're never going to go to. Yeah. You can tell that too, through the characters though. It's so genuine what you guys put together. And like most people hear American Pie and yeah, it's like a raunchy comedy, but it really is as a series, it's got a good heart to it, you know? And I think you said that best and it's, it is, it's truly genuine what you see on screen. And when you see it, brings back all the feels and that's sort of the inspiration of 1999 yeah. and how this all came together was Jarrett and I watching American <laughs> Pie together 